All right, let's do my August TBR. So I don't know about you guys, but I am such a sucker for TBR games. I watch so many channels that have them. There are so many TBR games. And I love them. I love watching them. It's so fun to watch and it's so fun to figure, watch them like figure out what they're gonna use to fulfill that prompt. But to me, it seems like it would be too hard to keep up every month. Like you have to have this set TBR that you're following every single month and it doesn't give you like mood, like room to mood read. Like the second you tell me like these are the books that you have to read, I'm like, all right, peace. I'm out. But I want to try it anyway because it's fun. So then I'm thinking, okay, well, how can I try one? I just want to do it for one month. Like, what are the ones that are like easy to set up, easy to explain, all of that stuff? I first thought of um, Maddie uh, at Book Browsing Blog and her dart attack. And I'm like, I have a dart board. I could do this. But like, I don't have a dart board set up in my apartment right now. And I was like, I don't want to nail something into the wall. And then like, too much, too much to go on. So I'm like, do I do Becca's Bookopolis on, or Becca's Bookopoly, where you just make a book, like a, a board and just roll and go for it. And then I was like, no, too much setup, can't, can't commit. Um, and then I'm like, okay, what about Cody's Wheel of TBR? And I'm like, I'm like, you just need to like make a circle and like get it to spin on something. And then I'm like, ah, figuring out how it's gonna spin, too much of a commitment. So. I'm bouncing these ideas off of my partner and he's like, well, what about games we have? And I'm like, well, really the only game we do have is Pandemic and it's not, it's not going to work out right now. Um, and it wouldn't work for this game. I'm sure someone's creative enough to make that happen, but not me. And so we are looking through our games and then I come across this game. We only have like four and I come across this, this game called like Bring Your Own Book. Never opened it no idea what it is. Um, I'm sure someone got it for me because they knew I liked books or something like that. I don't know how it came into my possession. So then I look into the rules and I'm like, okay, this is very simple and straightforward. I can do this. So essentially how the game actually works is that you have this deck and one person picks the top card. So I'll just do it. And it says, the meaning of life is, and then everyone else has to go around the bookshelves and look for a phrase or a sentence from inside a book that you could say that's what the meaning of life is. And then once one person finds it, they turn over a timer and then everyone else only has 60 seconds to find what they're looking for and the game ensues. But if I did it like that, I would spoil books for myself. So I don't want to do that. Instead, I'm going to use the title. Is this going to work? No idea. But we're going to we're going to do this together. We're going to attempt this together. And I think I'm only going to pick four prompts because um, I want to be able to read other things within the month. I already have plans. How these are set up, they don't really give me any room to like it doesn't give me much room because they're so specific like I could be funny with the meaning of life is but I think that we're gonna have to stretch the bounds of these a little bit to make them work um but yeah so we're just gonna go for four August is women in translation month so I'm hoping to read women in translation so we'll see if I could do that and we're gonna pick we're gonna pick cards. So I'm going to split the deck. We're gonna all right. We're gonna shuffle them in a little bit from the top. This is a really thick stack. I feel like these are gonna be hard. It's almost like trying to like fill a like a very strange tag video prompt where someone just is like rambly randomly assembling words and they're like come up with a video or come up with a book about this and you're like what okay so there's a yellow and blue one 
I think I'm just going to give myself the decision on which one I want to pick because there's a chance it'll be hard to fulfill. Okay, first one. Famous last words. I also could have gone for overheard on a CB radio channel where truckers are talking. I'm reading that backwards as I'm like showing it. So famous last words. I can do that. Okay. So I have three books. I have three potential famous last words. Um, it's obviously not a full phrase because these are, I'm just going off of book titles, but I'm going to give some context as to what I think went down um, in these famous last words. So I'm imagining here someone on their deathbed, maybe they were a bit mysterious, maybe it was like an Evelyn Hugo type situation where uh, she's telling her last, the last of her life to a stranger. And then she goes, but didn't you know, I am the brother of XX dies and then they're like who is xx like what are we talking about here there's that one now this one's like a bit more lighthearted. we're sitting i don't know why we're at someone's deathbed for all of these but we're rolling with it we're at a deathbed um and they've had like a long nice life and they're sitting there with someone talking and they're like, I'm on my way out, my brilliant friend. So it's more of just like a gesture of nicety to the person and like that's all they say. I don't know if these are that good. I'm, I'm just, I'm trying guys, I'm trying. Okay, third scenario. We have kind of an eccentric person who, again, on their deathbed and they're gathered they've they've had oddities of people kind of gather around them in their life so they're surrounded by a bunch of people who don't really know each other and are a bit confused why they're all there and they're listening to these last words of wisdom and all they say is didn't you know sin is a puppy that follows you home. <laughs> I'm like coming up, I'm having to do so much explanation to make these work. All right. So <laughs> these are my three options. Um, I, I think I'm going to read this. And is a puppy that follows you home. It is uh, translated from the Hausa language. The author is from Nigeria. This would work for women in translation month but it would also work for the invisible cities project because nigeria i believe is august so kind of counts for both of those and i've fallen behind on um reading in translation so i'm gonna pick this one and it says sin is a puppy that follows you home is an islamic soap opera complete with po polygamous households virtuous women scheming harlots and black magic so it sounds like it would be quite fun. Okay, we got a bit of good news or a moment in a propaganda film. I think I can be more creative with it. So we're going to go with a moment in a propaganda film. Okay, here I went a little bit more abstract. So just follow me. So I don't know, my, my mind just goes to like wartime propaganda, probably because that's how I learned about propaganda in school. So I'm imagining like destruction, so flames, which is not in translation. And I haven't really heard many people talk about it except for Simon at Savage Reads, who really loved it a few years ago. A young man named Levy McAllister decides to build a coffin for his 23-year-old sister, Charlotte, who promptly runs for her life. A water rat swims upriver in quest of the cloud god. A fisherman named Carl hunts for tuna in partnership with a seal. And a father takes form from fire. And 
I think that the point of propaganda is that it's meant to like kind of trick you by use of words. So it's disorienting. So we're going disoriental. Um, this is in translation and it's at once a sweeping saga of 20th century Iran and an intimate story of a young woman's determination to create a future on her own. Disoriental is timely, passionate, and an entertaining debut novel. Okay. Of these two, even though this one's the one that's in translation, this one sounds, I mean, I'm intrigued by the back cover. I haven't read that in a while and it sounds interesting. So I'm, I'm going with this one. We got the name of a magazine for kids or something a winner would say. Okay. I don't know which one I'm going to go with yet. We're going to, we're going to look. <laughs> okay. So I'm going with something a winner would say. So in my head, I'm thinking, you know, we just won something. So in this, in this one, you know, I'm imagining like a king who just like won a battle or a skirmish for his people. I'm like I'm reading fantasy, so that's where my head is right now. And with a, he says something like, we toast to my victory or we toast to our victory before the feast. Okay, this is in translation, but it's not written by a woman. It's the evening before the feast in the village of First and fell, population, an odd number. The village is asleep, except for the ferryman. He's dead, and Mrs. Kranz, the night-blind painter, who wants to depict her village for the first time at night. A bell ringer and his apprentice wants to ring the bells. The only problem is that the bells have gone. A vixen is looking for eggs for her young, and Mr. Shram is discovering more reasons to quit life than to quit smoking. I'm not going to keep going, but sounds like there's a lot going on there, and it's kind of thick, so... Okay, now I'm thinking that someone just won some something where they had to be graceful. Um, like maybe like because it's the Olympics right now, maybe we got a gymnast who who uh, just like totally killed it on like the uneven bars or something, or totally killed it in their floor exercise. I don't know, and they're like I executed that with the elegance of a hedgehog, <laughs> of the hedgehog, actually. And this one is in translation, written by a woman. Let's see, what is this about? We're in an elegant hotel in the center of Paris. Renee, the building's concierge, is short, ugly, and plump. She has bunions on her feet. She is cantankerous and addicted to television soaps. Her only genuine attachment is to her cat, Leo. In short, she is everything society expects from a concierge at a bourgeois building in a posh Parisian neighborhood. Is it? But Renee has a secret. She is a ferocious autodidact who furtively devours art, philosophy, music, and Japanese culture. With biting humor, she scrutinizes the lives of the building's tenants, her inferiors in every way except that of material wealth. Okay, so sounds like she's kind of unlikable which I can get on board with. And then this one, we're back to fantasy. There's a wizard or a witch or a warlock or something, and they win a duel. And they're kind of like talking down to the person that they were dueling against and say something to the effect of, I wish I went up against something more than magic for beginners. And so this, is also not a translation, and it is a short story collection that was recommended to me by the bookstore, used bookstore owner for the bookstore I go to all the time, where he's pretty familiar with the tastes in books I at least pick up. And it is a short story collection. It says, one of the most critically acclaimed collections of our time, Magic for Beginners, is an exquisite Dreamlike dispatch from a virtuoso storyteller who can do seemingly anything. Wow, they had a lot of good things to say about her. Now what is it about? Kelly Link reconstructs modern life through an intoxicating prism, conjuring up unforgettable worlds with humor and humanity. 
These stories are at once ingenious and deeply moving. They leave the reader astonished and exhilarated. Okay, it didn't really give me much, and but it said quite a bit to her esteem. Uh, let, let's look at some people's quotes. Funny, scary, surprising, and powerfully moving. This is what certain readers live for, fiction that makes a world instead of merely mimicking it. Ooh, that speaks to her ability to paint a scene, which I like, and her um, ability to write a setting. The most darkly playful voice in American fiction. So of these three, I think I'm going to go with Magic for Beginners, just so I have a short story collection, because I do like to kind of pepper those in through the month. So I'm one for three for translation written by a, a woman. All right, last one. Something you'd be surprised to find in a coat pocket. A stage direction in a comedic play. I think I'm going to go with something you'd be surprised to find in a coat pocket. For this one, I only picked two because, like, we could get real, we could go real far real, real quick. Like, you're not going to find a lot of things in a coat pocket, but I was thinking of, like, actual things that would fit in a coat pocket that you wouldn't find in a coat pocket. So, first one, a fist or a heart. I mean, you might find a fist. You're actually probably going to find a hit. Does that not work now? I mean, you're not going to find a heart, though. But it is an or statement, which doesn't mean and or. It means or. So there's a good chance you're going to find a fist or a heart. It's just never going to be a heart. We're going with it, okay? We're going with it. And this is in translation. This is translated from the Icelandic, and it is by a woman in translation. Aline John Stotir lives an isolated existence in Reykjavik, Iceland, making props and prosthetics for theatrical productions and Nordic crime flicks. In her early 70s, she has recently become fascinated with another loner, Ellen Alf Stotir, a sensitive young playwright and illegitimate daughter of a famous writer. The girl has aroused maternal feelings in Ellen, Ellen but she has also stirred discomforting memories long packed away because their paths have crossed before. One doesn't remember, the other is about to forget. Sounds interesting, could be into it. Okay, next one, a broken mirror. Why would we find that in a coat pocket? And this is also by a woman in translation. In its moment of great splendor, the novel was held as a mirror of society. It shatters that mirror in this in this, the author's most ambitious novel, which tells its story in brilliant fragments of vision reflected and refracted and finally coming together in a richly articulated mosaic of life. Through this broken mirror, the reader sees events and characters spanning three generations and composing a kaleidoscope family history ranging over six decades and turning upon events both intimate and historic, most notably the Spanish Civil War. No, so this is in translation, but not by a female author. So I think I'm just going to go with this one. It sounds interesting. I recently saw Mariana review it on her channel and Mariana Moss Books. I will link her. And she didn't like the ending, but had said she liked it most of the way through. So I could get on board with liking at least most of it. But we'll see how I feel. That's all I have. Um, this took super long to film, and uh, I felt very silly coming up with some of the answers. So let me know if any of the books I mentioned, even the ones I didn't actually put on my TBR, I put these four on my TBR. Let me know if you guys watch TBR games, who you watch that maybe I didn't mention or put, put up, um, and then if I ever want to do this again in the future, do you guys have any suggestions of like low energy, I don't have to put much work into it, TBR games? Okay, I will see you soon. Happy reading.